All right, so this is, I think, and gosh, I wish we could play the All-22. This is a great example of knowing that your receivers are better than their defensive backs yeah. because look how many people you keep in seven-man protection, right? And so you've got just Mason Taylor. It's 12 personnel, by the way, which I haven't done a ton of. And so you're not thinking shot. In 12 personnel, you're thinking, okay, they're going to run the football. They've had success running the football. They did 12 uh, a bit this game. I, I know. Like, I know. Yeah. And so, like, it, it's really a tendency breaker, which I also love that. And so here's what you're going to see. You're going to see max protection because you're taking a shot, and you just got three guys in routes. But, again, it's trusting your receivers. You have double stutter on the outsides. And so you're going to take a one-on-one -on -one matchup because these guys right here are going to try – obviously, to create that mismatch. And then you've got Mason Taylor, who has four defenders in the middle of the field uh, there for Ole Miss. But I love the concept. I love saying, hey, you know what? Our guys are better than yours. We're going to pull double stutter. And double stutter, you're, you're selling that you're going to run some type of a stop and you're going to the end zone. Most of you kind of know that right now. Which, uh, later on in the game, on a lot of these short yarded situations, was one of the most effective routes for LSU. It was just taking off like you're going on a go, and then just chopping down, and uh, the ball at the time and all was great. But I, I really just highlighted this play to show how good the route was by Brian Thomas. It was good at the bottom, too. I, I missed that then, actually. That's because, what I'm saying. I love they it. Cook these dudes. And then when you throw the ball deep, good things happen. For, for, you know, they, they know, something bad can happen, but a lot of times good things happen. Go ahead and play it, Danny, on this replay. Can you see it here? Mm, it's kind of a tough view. But if you, but it, but if you go, um, I mean, to win by... Like four, like three to four. Here it is. If you win like three to four yards in that short of a window, that's just pure route running it, domination. It right is. There. And this is what we talked about. Your guy, one on one, you yeah, put the ball in the air. College DBs, what do they do? Always panic. Yeah. yeah. And you're going to get either the touchdown or the pass interference because they've seen on film number 11, they've seen seven, they've seen eight, they've seen all these receivers, they've seen number 10. They know that they're dudes, and yep. they panic. And yep. so it's a perfect example of max protection. Let's run double stutters on the outside. Let's run the tight end in the middle of the field to be able to have that outlet as well. It's either our guy or nobody, right? You put the ball in that spot, and good things happen. Why wasn't there a safety there? It's just based off, I mean, the coverage that they had because you're in 12 personnel, so the safeties are a little bit lower. Ah, I believe ah, okay. now again. I wish and we could show the, the end zone really copy. Well this time. Yeah, they played a lot of one. They played a ton of cover one with one safety in the middle of the field. And, I mean, the safety on this decides to go to the bottom of the screen here. Again, can't see it, but the concept kind of really At, at this point, this guy is dead. Oh, he's done. He the knows DB it, too. The DB right here is absolutely dead. He stopped his feet. I mean, this guy's cooked at the bottom, too. I mean, this is really a nice concept in seven-man protection. Again, they have found multiple ways to get the football out in a good position in seven-man protection, and it's not easy to do that. We, we have Lamb just criticized for years. for years, me, T-Bob, and Flynn, but this staff is actually doing a nice job of creating mismatches in seven-man protection. Uh, what do we got next, Danny? What play? Mason Taylor, touchdown. Okay, uh, you, okay, okay. Yeah. Well, I want no, I really want you to break this down, Jake. Okay. But what, what, Okay, so this is third and goal. This is a gotta have it play, and they've been running the ball very well, right? And so, uh, go ahead and play it. What do they do here? <laughs> and remember, you got. Hey, stop real quick, Danny. And remember, this is actually oh, wait, thirteen. No, thirteen. I just saw. It's actually, okay, dude. actually, it's fourteen. What? Yeah, it's fourteen personnel. Oh my god! They have every single tight end on the team yeah. on the field. And remember, they gave the same exact look on first down, and it looked like Josh Williams scored. He got called yes. down on the one. They reviewed yes. it. They gave this same exact look. And so what's Ole Miss thinking? Well, because they gained two, three yards with it with Josh Williams on the one-yard line, what are they going to do? Because on second down, they tried to spread them out, and 11 personnel didn't work. Here we come back to 14 personnel, and Ole Miss is not thinking about anybody outside of Josh Williams. Yeah. Their secondary thought is going to be Jaden Daniels. No way in hell they think Mason Taylor is going to catch this football. No, so what do they motion him over and back? Yeah. As he comes to go out. Okay, go ahead go and play it, Danny. So it's a yo-yo motion. See what they're in. Okay. And then so like pause it. Pause Actually, it, just a yo. Back, it's back a, up. Sorry, it's a yo motion. He goes over. The Y goes over to the strength of it. And then hold on. Uh, but no, play it, Danny. I'm going to tell you when to pause now. Okay, so right now, like, so the defense, like, J like Jake said, they think it's just another dive to Josh Williams on that play. Mace Taylor comes back in zone. He blocks the... Uh, yeah. The edge. He always kicks out the edge, and so it looks like a, a true zone read run. 
And we've seen this uh, the last couple of weeks where they run this, where then Taylor goes out on a route and Jaden Daniels pushes it to the sideline. And if you run with Taylor, well, Daniels just cuts it up and he scores himself. If you don't run with Taylor, well, then you see what ends up happening here. Go to play. And it just looks so easy. And look, that's because the defender committed to uh, uh, committed to Jaden Daniels. So like the triple options there. They have to defend the dive from Williams. Then they have to defend Jaden Daniels uh, just stretching him and cutting it up. And they have to defend Mason Taylor going out on a route. I mean, it's, it's very difficult to stop. And then, you know, eventually they're going to probably put Mashburn on some type of a corner route to have another option here. That's, a, that's not an easy throw. No. I mean, you're like three yards from him. It's not an easy catch, but Ole Miss, because they thought it was going to be Williams, they certainly thought Daniels, if it wasn't going to be Williams, they never even thought about Mason Taylor running a pass route there. It's too late by the time the safety tries to come and get him. I mean, you have three true options. And I think they have three options on that play. I don't think this is called Mason Taylor pass. This is called whatever the triple option no, look he, is. And he could have, yeah, he could have handed yeah, it. He could have handed, handed it, ran, yeah, or threw it. Yes. And, and also one of the reasons why Taylor's not being paid attention to there is because he's blocked so well all game. Uh, so, it, again, it's not like um, – By the way, Josh would have scored right uh, there. Yeah, I think so. I think so as well. It was it was a well-blocked play. I mean, four, 14 personnel. I don't think I've ever seen 14 personnel. Like, they told us they love tight ends. I mean, I guess My heart so, can't dude. take it. I love it. Look at this. This is what is this? A little triple tight end stack right there, dude. Uh, all right. Uh, when we get back, we got a couple more to get to. Keep it locked right here in OTB. Uh, let's dive in. Do a couple more film rooms, and then uh, we will put a bow on it. This is third and goal, uh, beginning of the game. This is when Malik Neighbors does not score, but rather gets pushed out of bounds. And Jake, I, I, I actually uh, did this a bit on whim, so I don't have, like, the thing that stood out to me about this play is, uh, and you and you can break it down more, but it's just that you watch Jaden Daniels, you clearly see him go through his progression, and he finds Malik, he, he stays in the pocket, deals the guy in his face, and he finds Malik on a route and in a depth of progression that he just would not have at the beginning of the season. And yeah. it's a route that I said at the beginning of the year that he wasn't capable of throwing. Mm -hmm. Those timing routes where they're coming across the middle. Anticipation routes. That's what I was looking for. Yeah. The anticipation route. And it is, I, Danny, do they go to a sky cam view on the replay? Probably not. I don't know. They might because of yeah, yeah, obviously okay, it being okay. a close call. I, I, I wish they would because it is a beautiful thing. But look, he stays strong, stays strong, and then hit. And if, if, if you see it from the end zone view, it does not look like it's open at all. Yeah. There's no way uh, that early in the year he would have found him, and he did. And you're, what, two inches away from a touchdown there? Back Ooh. it up, though, Danny. Back it up uh, to the beginning of the play. I don't care about the catch real, as much. Real pause quick, it. pause it. I love I love this yo-yo motion. So, like, anytime the tight end goes across, we just – every offense I've been a part of, they call that a yo motion. Yeah. A yo-yo is just you go and then you come back, and that's why we call it – like a yo-yo. Yeah, that's why we call it a yo-yo, and it's a Y tight end, whatever – but they do it. I mean, obviously, they want to see what the defense does, how they adjust to it. And I love movement, man. I love shifts. I love motion. It just tells you the story of what the defense is doing. Because if they don't panic, if they don't move, well, they're playing zone. I mean, it's it's such yeah. an indicator. And, and, the, and the anticipation route he throws is it it works against zone. And it's so yeah. easy. It's so easy. Look, that doesn't do anything for Mason Taylor. A little back, a little forth gets him on the move as well. And so. It's something very slight, and it's very easy. Did we get an end zone time? Yeah, well, that, that's all I know. We were teased with one. I think they switched. Oh. Pause, 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 pause. Uh, go back, and and, and and then everybody just watch Jaden Daniels and go, go through his reads. I think, look, I think Malik might even be the last read here. He goes, here, here, here. You see his eyes working, 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 and then he got over there. and mm. throws it, Look, throws it over Dime. the defender, and then it, with anticipation gets it over Reese right there, and you're a few, you're what, an inch short. I mean, yeah. you're right there for a touch. I think this might be. God, they tease God. us with that beauty. Stop teasing me, Danny. <laughs> that's, that's good, Danny. That's all I want. I just want to show the growth of Jaden Daniels. He got to his last read. He did an anticipatory throw. I didn't think he was capable of, and it may not have paid off here, but it will pay off in the future. All right, I want to play this play. It's an Amarni Goodwin run, and it is something that they have not shown this year. And T-Bob, you and I were pointing this out while we were watching it because like every time we watched, I think we found kind of a, a new part of this play that we liked. And so you got trips to the top here, and this is somebody that in space can be really dynamic. Now, he can make tough runs as well, but 
this is a great tendency breaker because you haven't really shown this for, for any of your running backs. And your receivers, like when I look at pro football focus, one of the things that, that has really stood out to me because they grade receivers in the run game as well. They've been blocking and how well. They've been blocking their ass off. Should have mentioned that. And Dre Jenkins is is one. Kayshawn is Kayshawn buying too, in. Yeah. Uh, Brian Thomas is bought in. Malik, like everybody is bought in to being a mauler in the run game, which you just don't ever really get uh, when you when you had this much talent in the receiver room. And so it's a nice job by them to have that mentality. But Danny, you can go ahead and start. I'll tell you when to stop. All right, stop it right here. This is just That's down. Right down and around i mean this is basically like you have the tackle and guard going down oh, you and you got be. the backside guard coming on a pull that's what this is now an incredibly unique way to get to it i mean you just don't see the receivers go down down tight end comes around i mean this is like old school well toss it's it, it, it's funny yes because uh what it shows you is that like conceptually over time in football uh, a lot of the concepts remain the same it's just how you package them or, or how you get there. And if you hear the uh, the giddiness in mind and Jake's voice, that's because this is Horn Boss, one of yeah. my favorite run plays <laughs> yes. of the prime mid-2000s yeah. LSU repertoire, which is... Not uh, not quite toss dive like you're thinking, but Horn Boss. Yeah, it's, it's a sweep. It's, a, it's like a sweep where everybody blocks down in the guard and center pull, and they're the lead blockers in the alley. So you, and, and right here, instead of guard and center is blocking down, it's... The receivers and the tight end becomes the puller. And you also, because your quarterback is so dynamic in oh, the run yeah. game, you have a defender that goes straight to him and not straight to the running back. If you had somebody who has concrete feet, then he's not going there at all. He's yeah. going straight to Armani Goodwin. And now, can Armani make him miss? Maybe so, but you don't even have to worry about it. So one of your most dynamic guys in space gets the ball with all kinds of space. And in fact, the receivers do such a good job of blocking down on these guys Mason Taylor's having to search yeah. for somebody to hit. I mean, this is perfect. Look at all these it, it offensive just hooks linemen. Everybody up with a great angle in the box. Too. Everybody so has easy. an advantage, and everybody is doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing. And you can go ahead and let it play a little bit, Danny. I'll tell you when to stop. Stop right here. Right? Okay. Now, Mason Taylor, because he didn't have anybody to block, okay, he's in a little bit in no man's land. Armani Goodwin has a cut off that, but it's okay because as a running back and as a good running back, that's supposed to be your advantage. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. You've got one on one in space. So go ahead and play it, Danny. Right? You run past him. Yeah. You get another what? Twelve to fifteen yards. Yep. Yeah. Right? It's a great play. It's drawn up perfectly. The receivers are doing the dirty work. Uh Mason Taylor, who didn't end up even affecting oh, the play, you. right? Ooh, nice view. Well, he, he kind of like the problem is I now, think Taylor, Taylor Taylor, this is this is a good learning moment for Taylor. And it's funny that you're going to see this after I bragged on his it, run block. That's, a, that's a very game. tough spot for him yeah, because he's space. actually go back, go back just a little bit. I, I know it's kind of tough how we need a clicker right there. That's his read. His reads telling him to go outside because Brian Thomas has yes. leverage on this guy and Armani Goodwin. Maybe he could press it a little bit and then bounce it outside, but I'm never going to fault the running back for seeing it split open him, put his foot in the ground and go get what? 25 yards. Yeah. Right, so Mason Taylor on this play, he's really in no man's land. He's actually reading it right, but the defender's going to work his way. You can go ahead and play it now, Danny. He's going to work his way back into it. But if I'm look, if I'm if I'm the running back coach, if I'm Frank Wilson, I'm not telling him to go out there and follow him. I'm saying put your foot in the ground, yeah, go get yeah. 25 yards. And 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 the movement of Taylor does cause him to run the hump, like a it little, like like it kind of brings him over and opens up that cutback for uh, good. But yeah, I do like when Goodman just saw him out there just blocking. Him. Blocking, dude. Look at the fight, man. Look at that. Look at that. Made that thing happen. And that's why that's another thing that I want to highlight. Kayshawn played very well. And all this talk of him being checked out or anything like that, it's just not true. It's absolutely not true. And I know Kelly talked about it in the post game saying that Kayshawn ran up to him immediately and was like, hey, you make sure you got to open up talking about the defense stopping the run. And Kelly's kind of laughing. He was like, man, first game I couldn't get you to talk to me. Now you're like writing my material for me. <laughs> uh, so no, Kayshawn has accepted his leadership role. He has checked in, and he's doing the little things like that to that, help be successful. And, and, and look, I understand that you, there's been a narrative created, but I, I, I want to reiterate, I, I've played with some really good receivers. The best ones, the very best receivers I've played with are ones that do things like that. Yeah, Because you're not yeah. going to get everybody, like Malcolm Floyd when I was in San Diego did that. Vincent Jackson did that. Um, when I got to Denver, Demarius Thomas did that. Eric Decker did that. Wes Welker did that. All of those guys, they understood – that that was part of the offense and it opens up everything else and you're out there and that's your assignment. Go out there and do it. 
Yeah. Like there's not being a diva. There's none of that. No, you go call it and you, whatever the call is, you go out there and you execute it like that. 